Um, the, well, I, well, the premise of what attracted me to the project, um, I mean, years ago, the Imaginarium uh, Andy Serkis's company, uh, <laughs> it couldn't be his name, right. um, but they came uh, came to me with, with the book um, that it's based on, and they basically said, oh, we've got this story, it's about a 16-year-old boy witch, and it's about him getting his powers and finding out who he is and going on a little journey and all that stuff, and they're like, oh, would you like to adapt it? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I didn't think I But then I, I read it, and it was uh, this really amazing story of sort of found family and friendship, and um, these brilliant characters finding out who they are, and all sort of set in a sort of grounded fantasy world. Um, but the stories are basically about Nathan, played by Jay, um, who struggles with, uh, who, well, struggles because his father is the most evil witch that's ever lived. Played. <laughs> by David. So scary. Um, very, uh, scary well by David. And it's about basically Nathan going on a journey, sort of finding who he is and what sort of witch is going to be and what his powers going to be. Oh, and sorry, I had meant to add at the top of the intro that Andy Serkis had really wanted to be with us today, um, but unfortunately because of a family circumstances, he's not able to. But yeah, he's an um, executive producer and obviously the founder of the Imaginarium. So let me throw it over to you first, Jay. Tell us about Nathan and and how you saw him and how you embodied him. Nathan Byrne is a very isolated, lost, confused boy when we first see him in the show. Um, his mum sadly passed away when he was a kid. Uh, his dad wears great hats and is the most evil witch on the planet. Um, he lives with his gran. Uh, who loves him very dearly, and then his sister who hates him because of his dad's action. And, uh, yeah, it, it leaves him very uh, lost, and um, he has to go on that journey to find out who he really is. And uh, it shows it, he shows his emotion, and he's a very angry and emotional person, uh, but also he's very cheeky and charming. Amazing, but no, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's the whole thing of Nathan trying to find out what his dad has done and uh, yeah, who he is. Yeah, and like, it is obviously really, really dark, but it's also really funny. And Annalise is obviously a, a favourite of mine because she's really genuinely hilariously funny. And like, so um, Nadia, tell us a little bit about playing her. I mean, I wish I was as cool as Annalise. I think she's so cool and like witty and smart. Um, I think the thing that drew me to her the most was the fact that she has such a kind of kind heart and this lightness and this kind of wittiness, but then an undercurrent of complete rebellion and inquisition about the world around her. Like she just wants to know more about the world and people and yeah, she's actually, even though she's come from quite a strict world on, you know, Fairborn and Blood, she's actually quite free as a character and she was really really fun to play and obviously like the cheeky little scenes <laughs> um, like as us as school kids and then that journey that we go on together like we are two completely different people by the end of the show than when we first meet them at school and you know having a flirty chat at a party so yeah and Emily and how would you describe Gabriel because he's a little bit more worldly wise isn't he? Yeah, sorry, what? He's a little bit more worldly, Gabriel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gabriel, so he's a, he's a blood witch, so he's another type of, of witches uh, in the world. And uh, yeah, it's about his personality, he's, he's a bit like a cynical guy, more, I would say. And he doesn't like to take uh, uh, yeah, things seriously in life. And um, he describes himself in the series, and he says, uh, I live a life of fabulous debauchery. I think that gives a good taste of uh, his last, uh, his lifestyle and who he is. And I think he dresses the coolest in the show as He's well. He's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. wait for you guys to see his face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and his blue fingers. Oh yeah, I have blue fingers. If I don't see a Halloween, people rock in blue fingers. <laughs> it's serious. That's true. And, um, and David, obviously the most evil witch in the world. Um, you're kind of a, a, a presence of an absence, if you know what I mean, for a lot of the show. So how did you kind of approach Marcus? And also, could you talk a little bit about the concept of, of blood witches and fairborn? Yeah, absolutely. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you all for coming. It's amazing to see you. Um, so, Marcus. 
if you think of the worst terrorist in the world, he has that reputation. And then perception's interesting, isn't it? Because someone's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter, perhaps. Um, so I think leaning into the the world of the bastard son and the devil himself kind of just leans, it just looks at that and just leans into that. What happens if this person has this crazy reputation? And as we go through the series, we just find out different things. I'm really trying not to spoil it for you, uh, and I hope I haven't. Um, but is that enough, or would you like a bit more? Yeah, I think you're good. Is that right? Um, so, Colm, you obviously directed um, four episodes, is that right? And um, so, what was it like working with these guys? Because they've got incredible chemistry together. Like, what was it like on set? Uh, I think it was like super fun, right? Yeah, yeah it was so fun. 